community development, uh, ports are in this, in this cost. And if you look at the, 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 the real increase right here between like 13 and 14, the main reason, um, or the biggest increase during that time is just related to um, our engineering costs because the city was growing so fast. So there's times, times a year, in fact, you look at the growth here, and then it kind of goes down and then growth again. That's, a lot of that just has to do with, with the development of the city. So when we have a lot of development going on, we have to pay engineering costs more. And so I, I think it's just, and, and I can also point out that in those years when it's growing, um, we have revenue that's associated with that. And those developers are paying fees to do those things. So to make it seem like we're growing really fast here, just out of natural growth or, or whatever reason, I don't think is, is, is accurate. And I'd also like to point out on 15 and 16, these are not actual numbers. I, I assume they got them from our budgeted numbers. I'm not sure. Um, I really haven't gone through and figured out exactly where every number came from. But um, all these are budgeted numbers are going to be higher than our actual numbers, right? Because the budget is a cap that we can put on spending. I think, um, I'm trying to think, every year we've spent you know, between three to seven hundred thousand dollars less than what what's budgeted just as a city, or at least in the in the general fund as a whole. So when we're looking at this, and it kind of looks like it's steep right here. It's part of it's because we're using actual numbers here and uh, budgeted numbers here. Um, I asked anything. Yeah, and I think the other thing to point out on parks and recreation, realize part of the reason it's a little steeper here is because well, rec, rec center is back here. Is when we put in the rec center, obviously there are more costs associated with that, but there's a lot more revenues associated with that. So it's fair to say we're spending more on parks and rec than we were back then, but some of some of this uh, increase is offset with, with uh, revenue. Talk about fire station. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Yeah. So just looking at these numbers, it's really easy when you look at public safety to think of fire department separate from public safety, and that the police. Dispatch has a separate budget. Each one of those have a separate budget. In 2000, I can't remember 2005, but 2006 when I started as the fire chief, our budget was about 685,000. The next year, 735,000. Well, in 2008, everybody knows the city made a, a drastic decision to go full-time fire. We secured federal uh, federal grant uh, over a million dollars that the city didn't have to pay back, so that it allowed us to take a, when we're talking a service level. From you calling 911 for the firemen to get to their house or the ambulance personnel to get to the from their house to the fire station and then respond to your house, I mean, we average to 17 to 20 minutes response time. So that's whether your house is on fire or whether you're not breathing. When you call 911 in 2007, it was going to take that long for a response. 2008, we go full time. The budget goes from 735,000 to 1.8 million instantly. But over the course of the next five years, that budget increase was offset by the federal grant money. To the end of five years, then the, the cities totally absorbed that $1.8 million increase. So if you add a million dollars to that public safety 2005 line item, and it was really close to 2015, which shows over the course of those 10 years, public safety in general stayed relatively flat, other than that one huge increase to the level of service that the city is currently providing. So, so we're going to move to the next uh, slide here. And it's just a little bit back to uh, Pleasant Grove 3, uh, Thorne Thatcher Biff. Uh, help me understand why the cost of providing services has increased so much in a 10 year period when inflation has been less than 20%. So we went in, went and did our own homework and went out to, uh, you know, and Research it and look, it's actually increased 25.20%. So just, just a number, straight number that you can go out and look and research, do your own homework, you'll see that it's 25%. So another figure that is off. And so you'll see the trend here <clears throat> that these numbers are always off, always conflicting with what the city actually has in the books. All right, so. One, the summary that PG3 has come up with is that these unsustainable trends have led to our increased utility rates and will lead to increased property taxes. Property taxes in the city have not increased in over 30 years, as well it has not been presented on the ballot for 2015 nor discussed with the council for the next year. At this, at this point, we don't have any 
immediate plans to raise property taxes. So we're not sure where, where that's coming from. I'll let Lynn speak to the utility rate, and, but, but again, we're, we're not sure where, where their summary of, of that's coming from because the city council has never voted on raising property taxes at this time. Well, as you all know, we just finished up uh, not too many years ago, a couple years ago, the secondary system. The secondary system, uh, when Dean and Scott came in, they found that we weren't collecting enough money, which is breaking the law, by the way, uh, for secondary to even make the bond payments. So that's one. Now, your sewer, where uh, your TSSD has taken the rates up 52% of was over 50% over a couple of years to pay for their expansion and their all their work that they've been doing for several million dollars. And that's a direct pass-through for you guys. Uh, water. The floodplain, storm drainage down the second south that we've needed in for years. We finally got that in. That's uh, raising your storm drain. Three, over three million bucks. You've got, if you're going to grow, you've got to and provide these services. You're going to, the rates are going to go up, at least keep up with inflation. And you know, when you spend the basis, so you're going to do your job and you're going to take care of those too. So thank, thank you. So again, we've had both the Battle Creek and Grove Creek uh, runoff lines that, that came down into the canal. We've had the TSD improvements that the cost went into us for sewer and uh, secondary water. All these were left out. And, and in the debates, when we had it, we didn't have enough time to go over this with them. But again, that's where your costs are coming from. It's because of the growth. And so we're going to have a, a video next. It's, again, it's, uh, it's from a city council meeting. And so you'll have to help me from the date. May 26th of this year. Um, the city has a spinning problem. We just want to touch base on that a little bit. According to PG3. Understand. But what have you done to cut it? You know, in businesses, I mean, we most businesses through the last several years hacked away the budget significantly. Our budget, you know, our business, we have our payroll is is 40 percent of what it was or is. What has the city done to, to, to lower their expenditures? The city does continue to provide the same level of services that the people of the city have requested in an increasing inflationary economy with decreasing purchasing power. And yet we're asked to supply the same kind of services with a decreasing goal. Not true. That is true. So we feel this clip is important because as the mayor stated out, and by you're showing you the previous numbers, inflation, growth, all these numbers come together. When they're shown separately, it may not seem like a big impact. But when shown together, stating what the mayor has just said in a council meeting is that our purchasing power has decreased, but yet our quality of service and our level of service to the citizens has either stayed the same or increased. And so we're trying to do the best we can with what we, with what we have while increasing our revenues. And as, as you heard Blaine Thatcher um, call out from the audience, it's not true, and the mayor corrected him and said, yes, it is true. That's exactly the situation that we're in. I also want to point out, um, just the comment about anybody that's a private business owner, yeah, in 2008, it's easy to reduce your staff by 40% across the board. I mean, the market takes a crash, so it's easy. But the thing that you realize, people didn't stop calling 911 in 2008. If not, they actually started calling more and more people were at home, people were out of jobs. And so our daily population in Pleasant Grove was probably higher, which increased our level of services, where in business market, as Mr. West suggests, yeah, it tanked for anybody that was in the private sector. It was bad timing. But that still did not decrease the level of services that we were required to provide. And so the question is, what the city do? We didn't really have an option. We had to maintain the level of service. Correct. And so moving on to the next uh, next slide here. Uh, this is another from one of the PG3 uh, flyers. Uh, since 2007, operating expenditures have exceeded operating revenues. Now we get a little confused here because down in their, their wording on that same flyer, 
it kind of is apples to oranges, and then one time the next time it's apples to apples. So we're not too sure how they're trying to compare, point this out. So here they show program revenues and operating expenditures. Up here in their wording, they say um, operating expenditures have out, out, out exceeded operating revenue. So we're a little confused, but we're going to touch base on both of them for you so we, we, we can just set the line. So this is actually <clears throat> the graph that, that we asked Dean to, to put together based off the city financial numbers. The one thing that the PG3 left off their, their graph was sales and property tax revenue, and that's the biggest generator of funds in the city. We're not sure why that was left off and why they chose program ex uh, expenses or program revenues to look at. We'll have Dean speak to this a little bit. But when you leave off that sales and, and uh, property tax revenue, it does show a discrepancy in the graph. Um. So I'll just point out a couple things on this as well. Um, I guess first of all, you know, if we look at the first graph that was out there that showed at the four lines, I mean, let's call it this back, but the first graph that we showed that had, you know, parks and rec and administration and public safety, those are really numbers that really match up with budget. In other words, Government accounting is a little complicated. If you look at a set of financial statements, there's really two views of it. There's a view that kind of matches your budget and what happened with everyday expenses. And then there's a view that, you know, as an accountant, they use the term full accrual that has depreciation, it has um, a lot of different things in it that that, that, that first graph would have. And they, so this graph right here, or both of these, are based on those full accrual statements. And I think you have to be really careful using that information just in general. I know. When I talk to banks or talk to rating agencies, they really don't look at these uh, uh, the government-wide statements, is what we call them, these, these statements, just because there's things in there that, uh, that kind of can skew, skew things pretty easily. So for example, if I look at, uh, so this blue line is expenses, I look at that peak right there, and you can say, well, geez, what happened in 2007? That's a crazy year. Like, well, how did expenses go up by you know, whatever, $18 million or something like that? Well, that just happens to be the year um, the city did the deal with, with Hammonds to do the hotel out there. So it's showing up there as an expense because because that's the year we acquired the land, but it wasn't a cash purchase, right? It was money that was gutted. The, the money to purchase that was done through tax increment finance and through bonds. And so to look at that and say, wow, that's really weird. Yeah, it's kind of a weird thing. If you look at a couple of these peaks, like this, this peak here, when I first saw that, I go, well, they must be related, right? Because they both peaked at the same year, and they're, and they're really not. Some things that other things that are included in revenue here are, um, you know, as a developer, if you if, if you come in and build a subdivision in the city and you put in roads and sidewalks and things like that, you're going to spend your money to do that. But um, when you're done with it, you're going to turn it over to the city. As a city, we have to sh on these statements, not on the other ones, but on these statements, we show that as a revenue. And so I've had some people even after they saw this graph will say, well, geez, you had six million dollars there. What'd you do with that? Well, it's not really cash money. It's it's uh, infrastructure that was a con contributed to the city. And it doesn't come in in a, in a smooth, level way. And so, you know, I would look at this and just say, you know, a lot of the things that we do as a city are funded through taxes, right? You fund police and fire through taxes. Obviously, you call 911, they don't need you a bill, they don't send a bill in, or this, this exception is ambulances, but, um, and parks. Those things are just funded with taxes. So all of those expenses are included in the blue line, so it seems only natural or accurate that you want to show the expenses that are going to pay for those things in the, in the revenues. Thank you, Dean. Um, so I want to go back one. If I'm, when I got this on my doorstep, it kind of scared me a little bit because, again, it's apples to oranges comparison here. And I can imagine it probably scared a lot of you. What is Pleasant Grove doing? How are they operating on a, a budget like this? And so as you can see, and as we try to explain this, again, apples and oranges every time. And so, and we, I think we went to a little bit, and maybe we can talk to it again, is some of those increases is actually when you include property taxes and sales tax, it actually, again, it flips the chart around. But I'd like to maybe have uh, Chief Sanderson and Dean talk a little bit about, again, bringing on the full-time fire department and the rec center and the cost associated with that. Well, just one of the things in cost of service, um, 
when you look at the fire department as a whole, if you, if you look at it as a program, maybe what they were trying to get at, was that program cost $1.8 million. Well, the fire department only generates, through ambulance billing, maybe $345,000 to $390,000 of revenue. So that's a program or a level of service that we are never going to be able to make whole. So it's always going to be subsidized based on the level of service that our community really should demand. And that's a full-time paramedic service. Yeah, so uh, much to add on the fire department just in general, but Mark could describe it pretty well. We got a grant to do those uh, the new firefighters. We hired them all at once, but the grant kind of gradually went away year over year, so so that kind of took away. And I know this isn't why I'm here, but I'm going to say just something about the fire department in general. I mean, if you go back to 2007, that's a year we greatly increased the level of service for fire without increasing taxes or anything. And that may be a mistake, and we should increase taxes at that time. I mean, none of us were here then. But, um, I, use, I use this example a few times, and, and I just want, and I don't even know if it's appropriate here, but I just want to defend the full time fire department, how important I think it is. Um, back before we had a full time fire department, probably 2000. I don't even know, 2005, 2006, my, uh, my mom, who was, I don't know, 65 at the time, was walking down her stairs at her house, missed the last stair, fell, and it was one of those where you dislocate your foot, so it pointed in the wrong direction and broke her ankle and everything, just extremely painful, right? And Mark was probably right, 17 to 20 minutes is probably about the time. We called 911, and someone showed up quickly, um, you know, and they had, I don't know, I don't know he had a box, right? And, but, it, but she wasn't in shock, she wasn't bleeding, she didn't need first aid, and so there really wasn't much she could do. The ambulance came um, five or six minutes later. Again, there really wasn't anything they could do at the time. So they put her on a stretcher, took her over to the hospital. So it was 30, 40 minutes before you know, she had any pain medication or anything. And, and you could say, well, you know, in the long run, she's fine either way. But uh, I, I look at it today, if we call 911 today, especially where I live, Near the fire station, I think within two minutes we'd have four paramedics there to give her to reset her foot, give her medication, and, uh, and I guess it's fair to discuss which which level of service we want. But, it, but clearly, it's not the same level of service, right? And, and no taxes were raised or anything at the time. And I I kind of said at the time that was probably a mistake. I think we should have raised taxes at the time to put on that level of service. But, um, but yeah, that's just a clear example of. of uh, and this is a major piece, what's that? Roads. Roads, roads are one item we in and of itself, yes, but we have decreased what we are spending in roads. So no. I, I can show you. Well, go ahead I and mean, just explain it to you. Well, this is I'm more concerned now than when I first came to um, A careful analysis of financial statements of the city show that we have increased spending in every department except public works. Every year. PG3, specifically in council meeting, has been told that we have increased the road budget multiple times by the mayor, by other council members. We presented this information. Blaine right here admits, he was asked by council member Anderson, has this been an increase in roads over the past three years? And he says yes. Yet according to their website, right here it says that the city council has chosen to allocate of your $200,000 from general funds to our roads. In 2013, we were the first council in the history of Pleasant Road to dedicate an additional fund amount of about, it was actually $195,000 to our roads. For the first time, we started doing that. Now that general fund money could have gone to another fund. 
It could have gone to Parks and Rec, it could have gone to Police or Fire, it could have gone to a number of other uh, departments in the city. But we heard from the citizens and heard that they wanted to start repairing the roads more quickly. And so we started dedicating that money towards roads. On their website, just a few, the, actually the next paragraph, it says, the city has just approved spending increases every department except roads. We're confused. So either we spent $200,000 from the fund, $195,000, or we didn't. So they're trying to confuse the public. We told Blaine and other members of the PG3 multiple times that we have increased our road funding because this is their campaign promise that they're running on. That they're going to fix our roads without increasing your taxes, without cutting your services. This is their campaign promise. And we're here to tell you that our city council has realized what the citizens want and need, not just in roads, but in multiple departments throughout the city. We want to look at the big picture and Pleasant Grove. That's why I want to point out that from the mayor and the council member Anderson, we have told them that we have increased the road budget. Uh -huh. I've been just there was another key statement there, I, I think, and hopefully you caught on to, it said increased spending in every other department. And so maybe I could ask, I'm going to pick on Dean again, and maybe talk to that about uh, department increases over the last five or six years. Um, there is a, uh, as far as everything that's been uh, spending increases related to general fund, and there's a chart actually on the city's website that kind of shows this, but um, really the things that have been funded, pretty specific, I think we've got a list of it here. We have funded a couple of positions in police. We, most of the money, or the largest percentage of it, has just gone for regular pay increases or uh, things associated with increased costs of employees. Um, and so that's a lot of money. I, I think if you look, 2010, 11, I think we had 11 and 12, I think it was, there was nothing increase. I think two years there was 3% 3, 3 increase, and I think there was two years there was 2% increase. So, so yeah, it's true, money has been spent on those things rather than, rather than those. Um, we've also spent some money is particularly related to a lot of our country level employees. Uh, we were finding, especially in the past year or so, that uh, we were losing a number, especially public works employees. Um, and when the point was higher, it wasn't a big issue. People weren't leaving, and the fund was lower now, and uh, that has caused us. And we've looked at that related to several areas of the city, uh, public works, and uh, dispatch was one too, where we were losing a lot of people. And a lot of that was a response just to, uh, again, to, in order to keep people like finding a dispatch group. Hire somebody, keep them for six months, and then we go find a full-time job at the, at the county or something like that. So we're losing people. Um, as far as operating budgets, in other words, things other than personnel, there really has been very, very, very little increase in the five years I was there. Uh, I don't think there was one year where we ever told people, "Hey, you've got X amount of dollars extra to spend. Tell us how you want to allocate it in your budget." We have, we have kind of a few things here and there. Um, but when I say things, I mean the things that might have been. Five or ten thousand dollars. There was not. There was no general increases in those department budgets in the general fund for uh, for those five years. I didn't ask for that. I just want to point out also that over that course of nine years as the fire chief, other than that going full time level of increased budget, we stayed relatively flat. But for nine years, the citizens required more and more service, and so. I have to commend every single one of the city employees because they continue every day to do more with way less resources than other places. And they're happy to do it, which is amazing. I, I think if you, and if we can, we can show you after the meeting tonight, if you, if you go back over the last five years and look at the operational budgets of the departments, you're going to see that they've done quite well with actually no increases and, and doing more for less. And then when we challenged uh, the PG3 in the debate, going line by line with these revenues, I, I think they're getting confused with the revenues, money, 1.7 million in administration costs. And so I, I, maybe they can explain themselves on that a little more, because I think they're getting confused in our budget. 